Hello my YouTube friends, I hope everyone's doing well and that their cars are remaining reliable. Today I'm going to show you how to program a set of tire pressure sensors for your car using a Naltel TS508 TPMS tool. I'll be using my wife's Lexus GS350 to demonstrate the programming procedure in this video. But if you have a different make and model vehicle, don't worry, because this process will be very similar, if not the same. I'm pretty geeked out about this tool because it's so intuitive to use and is very reasonably priced. So let's get started. So what is TPMS? TPMS stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Each wheel on your car has a small sensor installed on it, and this sensor's job is to relay the current tire pressure of each tire to the car's computer. If the car's tire pressure is too low, then an amber-colored symbol that looks like a horseshoe with an exclamation point in the center will illuminate on the dash. If your car's tire pressure sensors are not working, then this light will also illuminate. If you're not sure what pressure to set your tires at, then check the driver's door jam. There should be a decal there informing you of the recommended tire pressure. The tool I'll be using to program the tire pressure sensors for my Lexus is an Altel TS508, and it's one of the best handheld tools I have ever had the pleasure of working with. This tool works with 99% of the cars out there. Just take a look at this list of cars it supports. Simply put, this tool can program your mom's Toyota or your Bugatti Veyron. How cool is that? And probably the best part is, this tool can be had for less than $300. However, I do recommend buying the tool with the Altel TPMS sensors as a package deal. I'll leave a link in the description to the kit that I purchased. I purchased my Altel TS508 as a package deal, which also included 8 Altel MX1 tire pressure sensors. I'll be using 4 sensors for my wife's Lexus and the other 4 for her Maserati Gran Turismo, which I'll be doing a video on later this summer. The really nice thing about these sensors is that they offer dual support for either 315 MHz or 433 MHz tire pressure monitoring systems. This means you don't have to worry about buying the correct frequency for your car's system, because these sensors will support them both. The kit that I purchased included a nice user's manual, a quick start guide, a USB cable, a wall charger, a relearn magnet, the TS508 tool itself, an OBD2 cable, and 8 Altel MX1 sensors. Before I get started on programming the sensors, there are a few things I need to do first. I need to update the software for my tool. I do this by going to support.altel.com and downloading their software update client called Maxi PC Suite. After installing the software and creating an account, I was able to update the software for my tool in less than 5 minutes. The next thing I recommend doing is changing the TPS prog limit setting to off. This will allow you to program the sensors that are already installed in a tire that is inflated. If you leave this setting on, then you will not be able to program a sensor that is installed in an inflated tire. You can make this change by going to My Device, Settings, and scrolling down until you see TPS Prog Limit. So now I'm ready to start programming the new tire pressure sensors. Each tire pressure sensor has its own unique ID, and that unique ID is also stored in the car's computer. There are two ways of going about programming the sensors. The first way of programming the sensors is called the cloning method. Basically, you copy the unique IDs from the old sensors and then transfer them to the new sensors. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to program the sensors because it doesn't require you to write the car's computer with new unique sensor IDs, since you are already using the same IDs for the new sensors. If the TPMS sensors in your car are currently dead, then don't worry, because the cloning method will still work because those unique sensor IDs are also stored in the car's computer, and we can retrieve them from there. The second method to programming the sensors is basically to start fresh and generate new unique IDs for all of the new sensors, and then write those new unique IDs to the car's computer. In this video, I will be demonstrating the cloning method to program the new sensors. If you'd like me to demonstrate how to program the sensors using the second method as well, then please hit the like button on this video and let me know by commenting down below. So let's get started. If your sensors are still good, then you can get the unique IDs from them by powering on the Altel tool and selecting Quick Mode from the main menu. Then selecting your make of car, which for me is Lexus. Then selecting model, which for me is GS. And then selecting the year. My 2013 GS350 uses a 315 MHz sensor, so I'll be selecting the first option. On the next screen, select Scan All Sensors. The tool will then start the process to retrieve the unique IDs from each of the car's tire sensors. And you just set the tool up to the sensor and hit the middle button and it receives the data 
and we just keep going around until we get all the data. Since I don't have a spare tire, I'll be hitting the in button when it asks me to scan it. Now that I have downloaded all of the unique IDs from the old sensors to the tool, this is what my screen looks like. The green check marks by each of the tires mean the tool was able to activate the sensor and download the unique IDs successfully. If you have an X by any of the tires, that means the tool could not activate the sensor and was unsuccessful in downloading the unique ID. This usually happens when the sensor is dead, but don't worry. I'll show you how to download the sensor IDs from the car's computer later. If you hit Y on any of the tires, it will bring you to a screen that will show you all the unique IDs from the old sensors. These are the same unique IDs that we'll be using to program the new sensors with. So now that we have all the unique IDs stored on the computer here, we're now ready to start programming. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and hit N to back out. And then we're going to go down to Program Sensor and hit Yes here. And then we're going to do Copy by Activation. So right here are the four sensors that we got. So the left front tire, right front, right rear, and left rear. And then their corresponding unique IDs. So I'm going to start with the first one, the left front sensor. Here's my blank... Uh, sensor just stick it in the holder up there and then highlight the which one you want to do first so I'm going to start with the left front hit Y to copy and it will start the programming process and then it even tells you please install the program sensor to the cor corresponding tire left front sensor so you want to make sure you keep track of which sensor goes where. So this is a left front sensor, so I'll label it as such. So that way when I deliver all these sensors to my tire guy, he knows where to install them at. So now all we do is just go down the list to do them all. So, this, so the second one I'm going to do is the right front. So I stick the new blank one in there. Hit copy. And it'll go through the programming process again. Oh, I did the left front. See, I made a mistake right there. So this one's actually a duplicate. So not a problem. If you do make that mistake, you can overwrite it. So just go down. I'm going to leave the sensor in there. Highlight right front sensor. Hit copy. And it will just overwrite. And we got our confirmation here. Right front. And now we have two of them done. Make sure I select the right one this time. So I'm doing the right rear, hit copy. So that one's good. So it's real easy to program them all. Doesn't take long to do it. So I just have one more sensor to do. That's the left rear. All right, so I have all four sensors ready to go. At this point, I'm now ready to bring the car to the tire shop to have my new tires and tire pressure sensors installed. Once the sensors are installed, the car should automatically detect them because they are using the same unique IDs as the old sensors. Now let me show you how to retrieve the unique sensor IDs from a dead tire pressure sensor. If your sensors are dead, then the only way to clone them will be to download the sensor's unique IDs from the car's computer. You can also use this method even if your sensors are good. It just saves you from having to walk around the car like we did in the last video. To do this, you'll need to connect the tool to the car's OBD port. This will allow the tool to communicate with the car's computer. 
For most vehicles, the OBD port is located under the steering column. If you can't find your OBD port, then refer to the owner's manual. Next, I put the car into accessory mode by leaving my foot off the brake and pressing the start button twice. This will turn the car on without having the engine running. With the car now in accessory mode and my TS508 connected to the car's OBD port, I'm now ready to retrieve the TPMS sensor's unique IDs from the car's computer. I do this by going to advanced mode, selecting my make, which for me is Lexus, selecting model, which for me is GS, and then the year and frequency type, which for me, my model year is 2013 and the TPMS sensor frequency is 315 MHz. On the next menu, I select program sensor and then hit yes on the note that pops up. That note basically tells you that the sensors won't activate until the car is in motion. On the next screen, select copy by OBD. If a message pops up and says use data stored previously from ECU, select no. This will force the tool to download the latest unique sensor IDs that are stored in the car's computer. Once you have answered all of the questions, the tool will begin to connect to the car's computer and download the TPMS sensor's unique IDs into the tool. Once the tool has downloaded all of the unique IDs, you can see them listed on the right hand side of the screen, followed by the word HEX. I'm now ready to program the sensors. It's the same process as I demonstrated before. You simply insert the blank sensor into the holder, select the wheel you want to program, and then hit copy. I have now just successfully completed programming the left front TPMS sensor. I will now go down the list until I have all of them programmed. You will also want to make sure that you label each of the sensors as you get done programming them so your tire guy will know where to install them later. I labeled my sensors using LF for left front, RF for right front, RL for rear left, and RR for rear right. I now have all of the sensors programmed and I'm now ready to drive to the tire shop to have my new tires and TPMS sensors installed. Once the installation is done, the car should automatically recognize the new sensors after about one minute of driving. After about an hour wait, my new tires and tire pressure sensors have been installed. The little color dots you see on the tires is from a process called road force balancing. It's a more sophisticated technique to balance the wheel and tire and I highly recommend it. You pay a few bucks more for this service, but it's so worth it. As you can see, my tire pressure sensors are now working correctly again and are displaying the correct pressure in each tire. My local Lexus dealer quoted me over $700 to replace just the TPMS sensors and program them to the car. I was able to buy this tool that included enough tire pressure sensors for two cars for less than $400. I then programmed the sensors myself and paid a shop $100 to install them. That's a $200 savings from the dealer and I get to keep the programming tool and I have an extra set of sensors that I can use for another car. If you own multiple cars like I do, then investing in quality tools like a TS-508 can save you a ton of cash. Programming the new tire pressure sensors for my car went very smoothly, and I understand not everyone will have the same luck that I did. In this troubleshooting section, I plan on giving some tips if you are having problems getting the new sensors to register to the car's computer. If you just got done programming your TPMS sensors and had your tire shop install them, and you're still getting the blanked out screen, there's a couple things you could try. There's actually a reset button under this steering column, and I'll show you what the, the button you wanna push looks like here. And if you hold that button down while the car's running, that will reset the tire pressure monitoring system in the vehicle, and that sh might take care of it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that procedure now. Basically, all you do is turn the car on, reach underneath the dash where the button's at, wait for the uh, TPMS light to flash on the dash as you can see one two and then three I'm gonna let off and what that will do is that will reset the tire pressure sensor information after resetting the TPMS system take the car for a short drive so the system can relearn the new sensors if everything is working properly, then after driving for about 30 to 45 seconds, the computer should make communication with the new sensors and display their values on the dash as shown here. If resetting the TPMS computer in the car didn't work, then I would recommend performing a relearn procedure using your Altel TS-508. You do this by going to quick mode, selecting your make and model, and then selecting relearn procedure. This process will take about 5 minutes to complete, but is very simple and straightforward. 
Hopefully these two tips will help you overcome any problems that you are encountering. If not, you can always call Altel support and their knowledgeable staff can walk you through it. And that's how I programmed and replaced the TPMS sensors in my 2013 Lexus GS350 all-wheel drive. I normally don't give glowing reviews for tools, but Altel really hit a home run with the TS508. This tool will program the TPMS sensors in 99% of the cars on the road today. And the great part is, you don't have to spend a small fortune to get one. I plan on using this tool to also program a set of new sensors for our 2012 Maserati Gran Turismo. The Maserati dealer basically quoted me the price of an entry level jet ski to program and replace all four sensors in our Gran Turismo. That's nuts. As you know, I make these videos to help owners like yourself save money and learn about the cars they drive. If you'd like me to continue making these videos, please like and share them so other people like yourself may benefit from them. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. So long.